guys. Yes, this is Frank with Tiny Plastics Baseman. Yes, I know it's not the usual video intro that you guys are used to seeing, but um, uh, just in a bit of a rush for time and I'm traveling and just want to be able to get the video out, uh, basically. So as you can see here, I am obviously airbrush priming a bunch of pretty old Chaos Space Marines and some even older um, I think they're push fit marines from the black reach set. I'm not really sure someone let me know in the comments um, But basically this video is all about the first round of tests that I did a little while back that is basically trying to get close to figuring out the contrast paints and what sort of mediums and paints and inks uh, will go some way to trying to replicate what the contrast paints, the actual official Citadel contrast paints, um, how they actually operate and work and and all that. So um, the the video is if you know, please give it a watch if you're interested in this sort of thing. Um, I'll be honest, it's a little bit tedious in places. Um, so I have tried to speed up uh, a lot of the processes here and there, um, just skipping forward in places. Um, so my voiceover uh, where I'm talking in the video that's about to start, um, that will uh, kind of maybe skip around a bit, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And I'll be happy to answer what I can. I do read and uh, try to reply to all of them. Look forward to another video, a follow-up to this, that uh, kind of narrows down a lot of the processes. But in the meantime, here's the video. So you can check it out and see what I went through to try to uh, get close to the contrast paints. Okay, guys, um, so here we are on the test bench, um, very messy as usual, but we've got the original Poxwalker model, so this is the one that is in the actual videos. I'm under um, daylight fluorescent light here, and there's a little bit of daylight coming in through the window that's just over my left shoulders, just to give you an idea. Um, now, obviously, you know, like anything, the closer you look at uh, a model that you paint you see little bits that you missed up or whatever but that's the that's the model there now this guy you saw him get painted as well um, and a few little um, bits uh, here and there in 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 a couple of the videos and you can see he's had some added stuff um, put on him and that's why I've been doing a lot of testing where all this brown is on his gloves his hood um, <clears throat> this bit here, whatever it's called, the little things that come down, the two, both the gloves, the left uh, foot there, and of course that big bright shiny thing, the uh, cloak or whatever it is at the back. Um, so these are all just various methods and mixes that I tried. Well, m mixes really. The method is goop it on and let it dry. Um, so. I think that glove is possibly the best looking one. Um, it's very smooth, it's flat, it's not as flat and matte as the shoulder pieces which are the actual um, contrast color. Um, these pieces here also, those two colors, those are the contrast color. Um, but that mix there on that glove, that looks really good. Um, you could easily think if you had no idea, if this is the first time that you're ever looking at that, you would think, you could conceivably think at least, that's really good. Um, I think it's pretty good. So, now I've tried a bunch of different things, um, and I'm going to try some sort of live here on the on the video uh, for the first time, and we'll we'll just see. So... I've got a bunch of models here. These are old models that I've gotten through Bitsbox purchases and stuff like that. So here we've got 
two corn berserkers primed in the ubiquitous UK color of Halford's Primer Gray. And as you can see in the daylight color, uh, daylight color lighting, it's just a medium gray. It's very, very just gray. Um, this is the Steinal Res Gray for comparison. So it's a little bit lighter than the Steinal Res Gray. I don't have Mechanicum Gray. I don't have uh, anything Games Workshop spray other than Lead Belcher. That's Lead Belcher there. So anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. These are the two Halfords Gray. This one is, this poor legless Corn Berserker is primed in the Steinal Res Light Flesh. You can see the color of it. Um, it's somewhat close, uh, right out of the bottle, to the Wraithbone, I think is what it's called, um, base spray. Obviously, you can add white primer to this, um, because it's airbrushed only. Um, you can add white primer to that to lighten it up quite a lot. Um, at the back, we've got three different metallics. We've got Lead Belcher, the standard, actual, straight out of the can, Lead Belcher. This is Lead Belcher um, covered with the Steinal Res Silver Primer. That's just decant. I have a bunch of the, the, the primers decanted into smaller bottles just for easier use on the table. Um, so Lead Belcher all over with just sprayed outside yesterday in two seconds. Um, and then a bit of Zenithal priming uh, with the Silver Primer. And that's a very, very light silver, which you can see here. This is all Stano Res silver. So compared to the to this uh, lead belcher, you can see how those compare. Okay, lead belcher, Stano Res silver. And of course, there's all sorts of plastic coat and duplicolor and I don't know Krylon all that. This is what I have. I don't have tons of those. I mostly airbrush prime. Um, this is the Stanoa's Gray out of the bottle, and then mixed, uh, I think it's uh, two to one with white, so it's a bit lighter. So this is kind of close, very close to the Halford's Gray, maybe slightly lighter. And you can see I was trying to get to this color. This is mixed one to two, the gray and white. Stano Res primers, and then this is, I believe this is, uh, oh no, this is even, so one to one, and then one to two, so one part gray to two parts white. So we're not too far off on the colors, but, you know, you could still go lighter. Um, now the idea being that going over such a dark gray like this, compared to, you see how, how dark that is compared to the what the the GW guys have, uh, you know, over over a period of months and everything, uh, figured out. I'm trying to reverse engineer what they did. So, um, there you go. Now this is a zenithal primed model. And if you don't know what zenithal priming, I, I mentioned it with the with the silver. Um, just show it in a uh, little clip here. Basically, uh, an entirely undercoated. Uh, in black model and then from about a 45 degree angle just to keep it simple you do gray uh, in a, a, a couple of light coats and then from the top or any areas over any areas such as the head the helmet the chest um, the backs of the legs the toes um, you know depending on the pose um, you hit it with a bit of white and you end up with this so from all angles see you know, from underneath it looks like the light's shining from above from above it looks like the shine the light is shining from behind the viewers head so that is zenithal priming so when people ask what's zenithal priming or whatever that's it's it's very very simple now those are the models Let's look at the materials. I've already said we've got a lot of uh, Badger Steiner Res primers in various different colors. I've used uh, white, gray, black, and silver. 
The silver is very, very bright. I've also got um, golden matte medium, which I've decanted to another small bottle like that. I've got some Pledge Clear. Get yourself a bottle of this. It's really good. A lot of people use this. They call it magic wash. They mix this with the paint that they use. And there you go. There's a wash. A quality brand name glaze medium. Now you can get this uh, uh, from Vallejo or Vallejo. But this is what you would find in an arts and crafts store like Michael's. Now I had some really good success with this. The only thing is, if you look here, uh, when it shows you how matte it is compared to how gloss it is, it's high gloss. It's almost at right at the very top. This is one of the secret ingredients, I think. The other secret ingredient for the best result that we've seen so far, or that I've seen, is this stuff, which is going to be pretty hard to find, I think. Um, you'll probably have to buy it online. But it's from Badger. It's from their Minotaire paint line. And it's flatative. Now what this does is it, it turns anything that is high gloss into matte. Or at, or at worst, satin finish, which is the semi-gloss. So you can make things as flat or as matte or gloss as you like. Really good stuff. So this is one of those things that not a lot of people are going to have heard about in the hobby uh, uh, scene. But this right here is is the business okay now I've got big old messy paint palette I'm just gonna move these things around and we'll get right back of course I forgot a couple things um, you see everybody standing around the sacrificial paint well I have a ton of inks of course so um, what I tried uh, so far on this guy has been this right here the Dale Arrowney FW like uh, I was told in the previous video. They are the same company. FW is just the brand. Um, so this is the Burnt Umber. I've also got uh, a nice bright orange. Um, I've got uh, purple, black, red. Okay, so I've got an old brush. Um, just using a flat brush because that'll just make it easier. Um, and quicker to get some paint on these guys. So, uh, oh, the other thing was, I've got ghost tint um, paints from Badger. These, again, from their Minotaur line. Now, these were everywhere a few years ago when they first came out because uh, they're candy colors. Um, and like a lot of airbrushable paints, they are... Uh, you know, they're, they're pre-thin quite a lot. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try them. Um, the idea with candy paints being uh, the more you put on, the darker the color gets, which is exactly what you get with inks and what you get with contrast. I'm going to try going with red because I've got red and I've got red ink. I've also got some red paint. So I'm going to give that a little bit of a shake. Everything's been shaken up fairly well. Got a cup of tan of tea first. It's actually coffee. So, good amount of the red paint. And I'm going to put a, a few dollops down because in the first use, a lot, you know, first um, inclination for a lot of people is just to say it's just a wash. So I'm, just, I'm going to get some water from the paint cup and thin it down. Now, I did see that there was a bit of a jokey video of someone saying, Oh, here's how I can make uh, real quick contrast paints. And he makes paint with glaze medium, which is not going to work because it's paint. And so I'm just kind of illustrating that. So I'm just kind of illustrating that the... 
this is not going to work. This is not going to be the right thing to do. But, so we've got, this is mixed with water here. And I'm going to put some glaze medium here. Now the other thing I'm going to do is do the old magic wash recipe with the clear. So this has a high, quite high flow. I'm going to try on his leg here. It's definitely a lot. Now, of course, you can, you know, you're, if you're custom mixing, you're going to be mixing these in whatever, all, all sorts of colors. So, so that is uh, one way to do it. And with just the, this is just a plain, this is literally a wash. Well, that is a wash as well, but this is the more familiar wash of just water and paint. So slightly less flowability, probably, if you were to do a sort of A-B comparison test. So not getting the results that we saw with the contrast paints. Okay. Definitely not getting those results. So we're going to try it with the thicker stuff, which is the glaze medium. Now one thing that was very specifically said was do not mix the glaze, the contrast paints with water. You must, if you want to thin it down, you must use the if you want to thin it in any way, you must use the contrast medium. which is interesting. So I'm curious about that formulation. Maybe it's got alcohol in it. We'll get to that in a bit. Now you might think that the instructions that come with the contrast paints, don't mix them with water. The more you put on, the heavier it gets, or the darker it gets. You might think, oh, that's pretty obvious really. But it's not paint. That's the main clue that it's not paint. It's ink. So we're going to try, or I'll show you because I kind of know what's going to happen. Five drops ish, I think that's five, of the glaze medium. Could probably go even higher concentration. And a drop of red ink. Now the ink stuff is very strong. And judging from the, I only have the one pot of ink for red, but it could possibly go even more powerful. I think what's happening with this one is that it's mixing with the, there's probably some blue ghost tint that's in this previously. But you know what? That's interesting because we'll try him with a purpley arm. I'm pretty sure there's blue ghost tint at the bottom of this, which is why the red is suddenly gone weirdly purple. But you can see here, this is, how you're meant to apply. I'll just go ahead and just goop it on. And they say one thick coat. And 
you know people are going to be testing that that instruction out and you see how it runs down the shoulder pad and it collects in the crevices so I know, I know there's going to be people watching this going no it's not really coloring it is it well it's getting there So we've seen what happens with that. Let me use a fresh cup. I'm going to do two drops of red in this. Just to make it even more powerful. Now in these drops, in, in these things, there's about a hundred drops of ink in one of these. I'm going to try his, his other arm now. Maybe it's the red. It's uh, just a little purpley. I thought I got bright red. So the idea with the contrast paints, and it's a it's a fine idea, is that it instantly creates the highlights. So you can see the highlights there on the shoulder pad, and instantly creates the shadows. And you see the shadows underneath the highlights. So it's all a very worthy idea. So this is my first time using it with red. So, and you see how it's already come off of a lot of the high points of that there. That's interesting. That is a crimson is what it's called, but it's, it's a very, even just mixing it, it's more of a very dark pinky red. I'm going to have to get some new inks. Okay, so there's that. It could be there's some residual something in the paintbrush, but I don't think so. So that's the the red ink that I have. Of course, there's probably 10 or 20 different reds that you can get. So I'm going to try it now with, uh, let's try purple. So that was one of my first attempts, was literally just glaze medium and ink at roughly a 5 to 1 ratio. It's a very, very high gloss. It does flow roughly like the, like the, uh, the, the actual contrast paints, um, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see. So the next step that I tried was a bit of matte medium and glaze and ink. And that was pretty much the same. There was almost no difference except it was slightly dulled down. This is with the glaze, uh, glaze medium and ink. Um, these were also with the glaze medium ink and one drop of the matte medium glaze and ink at a one to four to one ratio in drops. Uh, and then I tried matte medium pledge and ink. So that one was a little bit more interesting. So we'll try that. So matte medium. Again, this is just a golden brand matte medium. So this was four drops of this. Maybe a little more because I was using quite large drops. I was using out of a different bottle. And then the Pledge Clear, which is falling down over here. Just one drop of this, and what this will do is this will thin down, but also add a bit of flow improver. And then the ink, which I probably can't open with one hand. This is probably going to turn out to be a slightly longer video than I 
<laughs> originally intended. So mixing. So you see over white, it's got pretty good coverage. And you see where it's darker or where it's thicker in those lines of the brushes of the brush stroke. It's definitely a lot darker. So just to try it, we're going to do um, the sample Emperor's Children model that we saw at Warhammer Fest. We're going to do the same thing. This is straight lead belcher. You know, you're not meant to, you're just meant to use long strokes, so I'm kind of doing it wrong there. But gooping it right on. And what it'll do is it will self level and eventually fall off the highlights. So it might be a little thick. I'll try a little bit thinner on the other leg. So you can see already how it's falling into the the recesses. Some bits where it's a little bit thick. I did really goop it on on that left leg. So we'll come to that in a bit and see how see how it works. Now you could thin that down a bit more. We'll try thinning it down. One extra, another drop of the pledge clear. So you can see it's definitely a lot runnier, which is what we wanted. So we'll chuck it on this guy's arm here. I should have left the trim alone, but we'll see what it looks like. Put it on both his arms. Try to avoid the outer bit of the trim so that's a little bit extra thinning on the arms and quite heavy on the legs quite thick on the legs So we'll come to that in a little bit and we'll see how that looks. So going back to this guy, how did this work? So the paint, uh, the, the painted legs, it just, there's no extra shadows in the recesses at all, basically. <laughs> On this arm here, and of course the, the, the color of the ink turned out to be about the same, this purpley, um, purpley red. Although you can see there it's uh it's a little it's a little lighter in the in the cup on its own. 
So anyway, that's how that's turned out. So also it's kind of a dark uh, gray. So um, speaking of which, we'll try some of this. This guy's going to be a rainbow marine probably because he's going to have all sorts of different colors on him. So you can see here uh, behind the knee, I don't think I got him on camera very well, but this is the lightest gray color that I've got. Another popular thinner that um, people use in addition to the uh, pledge is windshield washer fluid. Now, you may not be too aware of this, but it is fairly popular. You can see it's windshield washer fluid. This is actually half and half windshield washer fluid with a little bit of alcohol in it. And I think that might be why they don't want you to mix water with the, uh, the contrast paints. So I'm going to put a couple of drops if we can. This is the stuff that usually just pours out. There we go. That's a lot. So soak up a bit. So that's a, about a drop. And we're going to use the matte medium again. And let's try and stay consistent and just stick with the purple. So that mix of the windshield washer fluid, which is a very popular um, flow aid improver basically, um, and very cheap, uh, that is really popular with airbrushers. It's a uh, half and half windshield washer fluid, uh, which you can buy anywhere, you can get it in concentrate, um, mix that with water, and add a little bit of alcohol, um, just IPA, isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to try this on a few of these guys, because this is, um, I'm going to can definitely smell like it smells like windshield washer fluid in there. So this flows a lot better. It's not as goopy, but it is still thick. So there's what that looks like on a leg. I'll try it on this guy here. Keep it off his holster. So just as an aside, um, a lot of people have been commenting on the videos saying that um, I've been painting with washes for years, and it is very, very common to paint with uh, uh, over a light gray or even white primer with various colors of inks. And as taken off recently, um, popularized by uh, the Independent Characters podcast, um, and you know, it's it the technique has been around a while, and it is very, very speedy and a great way to to get stuff painted uh, very quickly to an acceptable standard especially if you play board games so there we go so this is with the pledge and this is with the windshield washer fluid Slightly runnier, I think, with the windshield washer fluid, so you could add a bit more matte medium. Now, I'm going to try the glaze medium again. 
So a few drops of this. We're going to add the flat additive. Just a couple drops. And there's the purple ink. So that's what, uh, on the brighter silver, that's what that mix looks like. Uh, on the brighter silver, I've left, uh, I didn't paint the trim just to help sort of make it look a slightly more like a finished model. Um, maybe this could be thicker because it seems to be coming right off the edges. But the flat additive does make it a little bit uh, uh, thinner. But we're going to let that dry and see what it looks like. The other model that's lead belcher with the other version, it's looking really good over metallic, even the dark metallic. You see there on the on the shoulder pad, it looks really good. It's a nice uh, nice mix. You can tell on the shoulder pad, it's just really uh, you know underneath it is a little bit extra depth provided by the metallics. So back to this guy, still dry or still wet. So I'm going to try adding some matte medium to this latest mix and we'll see what this looks like. Just to slightly thicken it up maybe. Got three drops in there accidentally but it's alright. Maybe over the metallics, the a fairly dark metallic maybe is the better way to go. That lead belcher looking just a little bit cooler looking than this brighter silver. And lucky for us, this is the exact same shoulder pad that's on the lead belcher marine so a little bit thicker and just using the flat part of the brush to really just add a bit more thickness to this. So we'll compare those, uh, we'll come back to those and compare those. So another thing that I wanted to try was the Minotaurs and we've got the Fresh Blood Mentor ghost tint. It's basically red candy, candy red. See, so it's very, very dark. So we'll put it on this guy because he's been red from the beginning. So you can see how that flows right into the recesses 
very quickly. Put on his helmet and his whatever these things are called. These corn berserkers have been kind of left alone for years, so they're just happy to get some sunlight on them. So it's a, this is a lot thinner, obviously, than the contrast paint. We can see where there's been extra added. You have that dark shadowing. And the legs have started to dry on the flat surfaces. Again, that's just paint. This is ink that's going on the head and the front of the torso. Oh, and the arms. Okay, so let's look at this guy again. So he's starting to dry. There's definitely some heavy accumulation on that shoulder pad. That shoulder pad is looking really cool. The legs are looking better. It's very, very thick here. So that is actually looking a lot like Andy Hoare's test model. Not exactly alike, but very close. And this is the thinner mix with the flattative glaze and ink. So I think with the darker, I think it looks a bit cooler. One thing I did want to try to um, help make the ghost tints a bit thicker is to mix in the flatative. Um, it's not really meant to be a medium. It doesn't thicken things up. So I'm going to add some of the... You try it with the matte medium and try it with the glaze medium. So, But I'm going to add the flatative. It's meant to be two parts paint to one part flatative and again this will mat it right down I'm going to put it on this guy So it's definitely gone in the recesses and instantly shaded everything. But because it's so thin, it hasn't really gooped up to um, everything is highlighted, basically. Not just the highlight bits. Everything's highlighted. It's just shades. So this is basically a wash. So we're going to add So we've just added some of the glaze medium to that same mix
So we'll see, it might be interesting to see how these compare because they look, one's a little bit more matte already. But we'll let him dry a bit and we'll come back to him. Okay, so um, I've been flipping through my phone for a few minutes and letting some of this dry a bit. Some of the experiments have come out quite nicely, others not so much. First one is thin down paint. Eh, no, <laughs> doesn't work. Not even the glaze medium paint works. Um, now this was the ghost tints. You can see where it's still wet way in the recesses. It's still, you know, fairly dark. Um, but up here, it hasn't really highlighted anything. This is the ghost tints with uh, glaze medium added and flatative. This is with the flatative. Obviously, it's normally it's really high gloss stuff. The ghost tints, so obviously the flatative works. Um, but adding the glaze medium to it, um, it's just not as dark as you know as as solid a paint as it it wants to be um, this here this came out pretty good this side which is I believe <laughs> I believe this was the uh, uh, flatative and glaze and ink It's definitely not the glaze on its own. And if all you saw was that, you would think it's a completely purple model. Um, the metallic models came out a lot better looking. The lighter metallic, not so much. It's definitely got a purple tint to everything. But it's not as dark, uh, dark a color as, as we'd like. So, what's this telling us? Um, First of all, I'd like to get some of my pox walkers out, because I have dozens and dozens of them, and see what, I mean, power armor is one thing, flesh is another, cloth is another, okay? So we've got lots of cloth on this guy, for example, and obviously lots of power armor. Pox walkers are like half skin, half cloth, basically. So over, I think the, the, the darker, the gray, it's just not, it doesn't work very well. It needs to be a light gray. And that's obviously what the Games Workshop guys have figured out because that's a really light gray, that there. Um, and the lightest gray that I got was that in comparison. So it's a, it's a little bit darker, but it's not like tons darker like this here. Um, so it's a bit of an interesting interesting uh, uh, thing to try to reverse engineer. There's certainly you know when I first saw this result with the glaze medium I was quite happy with that but apart from the very high gloss. Um, but when you look at it, I mean, I'm still quite happy with that one on the cloth. On armor, not so much. 
So I'd like to try, uh, until I strip and rebase or reprime these guys, um, I'd like to try on this guy, which is the lightest model that I've got, a half and half mix of the glaze and the matte medium and a couple drops of ink. So roughly a one to one ratio. And we'll stick with the purple. might try two drops of the purple in that. And we'll give this a good mix. fairly easy to get the consistency but the vibrancy of the color is pretty important too. So you can definitely tell there's purple on there. Maybe in the bright color it's a little too... I mean with my bare eyes it's a lot easier to see. But we'll see how this looks once it's uh, once it's started to dry. It's starting to look a, very similar to this leg at the moment. We want it to look more like this leg. Because you can see the edge highlighting, the highlighting on the on the toe, the shading. Oh, it's a little, it's a bit too thick on that leg, but in the recesses, you can see it all in there. So, just to follow up, that last mix didn't really work out. I'm going to try adding another drop of ink and just to see what happens. I'm going to put it all over the head and torso and backpack. It's about the same viscosity. It's got the same flow, but it doesn't seem to have added any extra, that's the wrong use of the word, I'm sure, but any extra pigmentation to the flat areas. Not like this. It's not sticking to the flat areas enough. So that's a scratch.
So this is roughly a mix of 1 to 4 to 1 of uh, flat additive, glaze medium, and ink. Actually, 1 to 4 to 2 with the ink. Uh, it's an extra drop of ink added. But I think all over this medium dark gray, it's not going to be all that impressive. I think it needs to be a lighter gray. These corn berserkers are going to be very confused being purple. So an extra coat of the thicker test paint on this thin, thinly coated uh, right leg seems, it looks like it might do the trick. But the idea is to get it one thick coat, right? So. We'll keep experimenting. We'll see how this goes and see what these look like in a little bit when they've dried up. This is very, very thick on the bottom. So we're going to try the Zenithal Prime model now because it's becoming very obvious. The lighter the color, the better the final result. So this is the one I Zenithal Primed earlier and this is the the mix uh, that I put on this guy, uh, the slightly thicker mix that I put on this one. So I've added a second coat to his upper body and arms, um, and it's looking a bit better, um, but curious to see what the zenithal result will be. So I'm going to try to keep just the areas that should be purple, purple. Um, I'm obviously going to miss that because I've already messed up a couple times. <laughs> but trying to keep the the paint mix off of some of the trim where I can, so it sort of simulates a uh, the metallic trim here and there. I'm not being, obviously, I'm not being too careful with it. So we'll come back in a little bit and see what this guy looks like. And you can always add more on top as well to intensify the color further. Okay, so I think I've settled on a pretty decent substitute for contrast paints. It's quite goopy. It's very heavy on the color. Um, and it dries to mostly a matte finish, something like this. So that's over bright silver. That's over a light gray primer. That's over a zenithal primer coat. And that is over lead belcher. So basically, what it is, is three, maybe four parts of glazing medium. One part of Badger Minotaur Flatative, which is a flattening agent. And uh, you don't have to use this. You can use just normal uh, matte medium. It thins the glazing uh, medium down just a little bit. And then, of course, whatever ink you want. Uh, for these examples, I'm using purple because it's the most vibrant that I've got. Um, I've also been using uh, this burnt umber, which has given me 
this sort of result. So it's a pretty good dark flesh shade. This is without the flatative. Um, and this is with the flatative. Comes out really nice. Of course, I'm just doing this over uh, a bunch of old Space Marines that I've got, but I'm going to be trying this on Poxwalkers in the next um, next little bit, and we'll see what we get. So, as you can see, that is pretty much the end of the first round of experiments. Um, I Hopefully I've ended up with something that can get you started on your own experimentations and uh, let me know what you think of everything in the results. Let me know what you think of everything in the comments. Um, I know there's uh, there's uh, quite a lot of video. This is, I think this is probably the longest single video I've ever done. Um, but uh, there's, there's quite a lot to it, I think. Basically, I try to show all of the steps that um, that I that, that got me to the result um, where I ended up um, and along the way kind of realized where I'd made some mistakes um, and gotten lost a little bit here and there but um, hopefully that 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 gets you guys started off on something as well um, there's Plenty more to come on this, I promise. Uh, there will be a part two of the tests where I kind of narrow it down quite a bit, actually, um, and make it a, a, a bit more simpler to, um, I think, to get very, very close results to the contrast paints. And again, this is not meant to take anything away from Games Workshop. I think it's a marvelous system that they've got. Um, I'm just trying to do it you know, I suppose on the cheap and also, uh, you know, experiment along the way because that's just my nature. I like to try to figure out things of why things are the way they are. So um, if you have any suggestions, comments, questions or whatever, stick them down in the uh, comments down below. And um, and as always, check out the website tinyplasticspaceman.com, the Instagram is TPS Painting Studio, and of course we're on Facebook, Tiny Plastic Spaceman. Um, we're also on Twitch uh, at the same uh, uh, nick or handle uh, or name or at or whatever, <laughs> Tiny Plastic Spaceman. Um, and what else are we on? I, I don't know. Just, just search for Tiny Plastic Spaceman and you'll find us. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you made it all the way to the end. I know it's been a long one, but hopefully informative and maybe a little bit of fun as well. Um, and we'll see you in the next video, part two of the contrast paint replication laboratory tests and approval process systems something. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.